movement called Moral Maze, where we talk about issues of life, sexuality, mor morality, that other people simply won't touch. I always find it uh, strange, funny, ironic that Sun News, they, they have an agenda, they have an opinion. Well, we do have opinions, but we have all opinions allowed here, as opposed to, I don't know, who would it be? Oh, CBC, where there's one point of view and you cannot give any other, particularly on moral issues. So, well, we don't agree with that sort of thing. Jack Fonseca is here every two weeks uh, from Campaign Life, and you want to begin with Japan's new Cuddle Cafe program, where men pay a certain amount of money just to cuddle a young woman. Um, I wonder if it stops there. So what, what is all this about? Well, it's uh, there's obviously there's a problem of loneliness in Tokyo, and uh, and they're they're offering uh, for about thirty eight bucks uh, Canadian twenty minutes to cuddle a beautiful girl, and if you pay a little bit extra, you can choose the girl that you want. A bug. Uh, Seventy seven bucks for an hour, or six hundred and forty bucks to snooze for ten hours to really have a deep, serious slumber, being held by this beautiful girl. But realistically speaking, obviously it's not going to just be a cuddle of 20 minutes of, of being held by a, a young woman. Isn't it a form of prostitution? It certainly is. I mean, when you, you look at the facts, what they're doing is they're renting a woman's body for a specific purpose. Mm. And uh, sure, maybe there's not going to be sex, direct sex involved. What, what about if, if they're cuddling and the man is aroused and he tries to go further? What does she do? No, no, it's only cuddling. Oh, sorry. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I think they're going to have those slippery slope issues as well, especially since I, I looked at their website and they say that the girls can be delivered. So delivery is available. Really? So we've got the further... So what happens? Uh, you deliver her to your apartment. Uh, you're a lonely guy. Now the cash. Oh, oh, <laughs> can I get a Diet Coke with that as well, please? And the honey dip. Yeah, yeah. they're... they're um, speaking of, of honey dip, Justin Trudeau, we've spoken about him quite a bit on the show, but not in the context of, of, of moral maze. There's a campaign he's involved in that has a link to the Catholic school system. Yeah, yeah. There's a, He was a speaker at the uh, September 28th uh, Wee Day, which is hugely popular with schools it's such across a Canada. A lot of rubbish. It really is. It certainly is. And uh, there's a lot of political agendas there, but he was one of the guest speakers, and there was 20,000 students on September 28th at the Air Canada Center. When they're bussed in, they don't go. I mean, they, they, they have to go. They're bussed in, and, you know, probably what, a quarter, a third of them are Catholic students. Yeah. And that's where the real moral problem lies, because uh, you got a Catholic school system, Sending, busing in thousands of Catholic youth, impressionable youth, to listen to this guy, Justin Trudeau, the anointed one, yeah. uh, who holds positions that are totally contradictory to Catholic teaching. He is he pushes abortion on demand, homosexual marriage, other things that is totally opposed to Catholic teaching. And theologically speaking, for Catholics, that's a, a cause for scandal. Uh, by giving a platform to such a, an anti-Catholic person or a person who holds anti-Catholic views, yeah. it risks the scandal of, of the kids thinking, oh, well, he can uh, call himself uh, a Catholic in good standing mm. and still oppose Catholic teaching, therefore yeah. so can I. Now, do they have Martin Sheen there as well? No, I know they had Al Gore. I don't think Martin Sheen. Oh, had Al Gore. Al, Al Gore Lord. promoting his climate propaganda. And the Craig Kilberg is he involved as well? Uh, yeah, that's the Free the Children uh, right. program. Now the program has has some merit, but it's interesting. You have these people who are, who would claim to be Catholic. They don't seem to really embrace Catholic teaching. But but it, even the very name uh, that worries me. I believe in the me. I believe in community. I believe in, in fraternity and helping people. But the collective. I don't like this idea. And you see the kids screaming. Uh, as, as as if they were at a concert. They should be learning things in class. I don't see any merit in this. At all. I don't think it makes us a, a more compassionate or kind of society. Well, uh, Free the Children does some they, they things. Do, they, they do yeah. some things that, that are good, like drilling wells and whatnot, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of political stuff, too. I mean, they, they got in trouble from uh, Catholic audience uh, a year... Well, when the Stephen Harper had his uh, maternal health initiative, mm -hmm. uh, they published a letter... Uh, demanding uh, or criticizing the Harper government for not funding abortions in Africa. So it's not a very Catholic position. In fact, it's it's not Catholic at all. Mm -hmm. So there there is there's propaganda. There's things that uh, that aren't right that shouldn't be done. And mm -hmm. no Catholic students should be shipped to. What else you got for me? Uh, transgender third grade boy. Yeah. Um, how, plan. What's Plan B, by the way? Plan B is an abortifacient morning morning after pill. It oh. can be abortifacient. And uh, that's uh, being handed out willy-nilly in 14 high schools in New York City, mm. where the Department of Education has decided, well, we're just going to give up uh, these abortifacient morning-after pills and, and uh, injectable hormone birth controls 
uh, and contraception to, to girls uh, without parental consent. So they're giving them out, uh, parents found out about it, and they have to actually opt in, uh, opt out of it specifically in order to not have this given out. So they're, they're giving this stuff out. It's a, it's a moral problem because uh, you're, you know, for one, you're, you're encouraging young girls and, and the boys in the schools as well to be more sexually active. When you say, here's a condom, here's a, a, a it's shot to... empowering and enabling them. Yeah, yeah. it certainly is. And it's one of the same... Be, Remember that parenting is a great responsibility, so if, you, if you're going to have a child, if you'll be sexually active, you have to be ready. But at the same time, they're saying to parents, you have no right to you know, be in any way knowledgeable and, and have any authority over what these kids are doing. It violates parental rights. It's yeah. a very, very serious issue. Yeah. And transgender third grade boy, well, we, the girls wash them thing. I mean, we've done this, uh, you know, elsewhere in the show, but just briefly... There was a time when it, we could assume a certain common sense approach in our school system. And I don't think teachers are behind this generally. I don't think even many bureaucrats are. But a small group of activists in the school board trying to push the idea that boys should be able to use girls' washrooms and girls use boys' washrooms. That won't happen so much because they feel that they like, like a boy. I'm not trying to be contemptuous of, of those who are transgendered, but I don't believe anyone is born into the wrong body. I think people can have emotional challenges, they can have mental issues, and we have to be kind and compassionate and spend money on counseling them, but I don't think we mutilate the body. Gosh, no, that's, that's a, a form of child abuse. To tell a kid, oh yeah, what you're feeling is because you were born in the wrong body. That's not science. That's not medicine. That's psychobabble. It's, it's a philosophy and an ideology that ultimately hurts the kids. Of course it is. I was actually born in David Beckham's body, but I was given this thing instead, and I've never quite got over it. <laughs> Poor you. And I'm being, I'm, being, I'm being flippant about an issue that leads to the deaths of millions of people every day. <laughs> I just, by the way, I should say this. Handicapped people in this country, a number of people who face disability who have been fighting washrooms, for example, to have greater access, larger places they can turn around where there's a wheelchair. It's always an uphill struggle. Transgender community, which, how many people are talking about? It's such a small it's, number. It's so tiny, and I'll bet you some of these schools where they implement this stuff will have no one at all, yeah. No, not at all. It's a vehicle yeah. for propaganda. It's a vehicle to promote a certain sliver of the homosexual agenda, the LGBT agenda, and, and that's what they're doing with it. Yeah. A pleasure, as always. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.